Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna sort out these brakes. So guys, in this video, we're going to look at how I install these true 12 millimeter brakes onto the Crado. But first, please do subscribe, hit that bell, hit that subscribe button. Okay, now let's on with the build. Okay, so first step is to remove the brakes off the old calipers. So I've already unloosened these with a breaker bar. Brilliant. It's actually, uh, there's a thunderstorm outside, so that's what the loud noise is. Brilliant. So there are the spacers. So there are, I think, four mil or five mil for the four by, four by, sorry, five by 100, uh, 312 mil brakes. Okay, so the next job now is I have a brake piston off the brake carrier and I have a rag in between the brake pads. So I'm gonna get some air now and just drive it into the hole here. So I've done WD-40 just sitting in it just to soften everything up. And um, I'm gonna just try and just see if the piston will move because if it's frozen, there's no point in putting it onto the car and then having to take it all back off again. So um, I pulled the boot off as well and I just put a little bit of WD-40, just smeared it in um, between the boot and the piston to Hopefully you just break up anything that's there and uh, I'll give it a while just to let it soften and um, then I'm going to put some air into it and once I see a little bit of movement I'll be happy okay so I think I can do this all one-handed I have a plastic glove wrapped around the nozzle of the um, air gun so I'm going to shove that in there that'll stop any leaks come, coming back I have the rag in it to stop the piston uh, coming out and either damaging these or shattering the piston so um, I think I can do this one-handed Okay, so it's really hard to see but it has that was in more flush so it's after coming out okay so the next step now is to get some copper grease and just spray it gently onto the tips just here and here so when it slides in it has um, loads of uh, lubrication that'll do Okay, now to move on to brakes. So these are from an Audi TT or from an Audi RS. I can't remember which they're from, but they're from MTech. So they redrilled me four by hundred, and uh, these are three hundred and twelve mil brakes. So they're fairly big brakes. So thankfully, I got a set of brakes that will also work. So these have to go on here. So the distance from here to here is exactly one hundred mil. And thankfully it's also 100 mil on these as well so they will fit which is brilliant and uh, the problem is if i bolt them straight up like that they just won't fit and if for anyone that's put five by 100 brakes using these uh, big 312 mil brakes you know that you have to put a four mil spacer here unfortunately because the distance here is greater and uh, i had to get them redrilled and they obviously don't make them in five four by 100 um, I've put a spacer in here, so I have to figure out what this distance here is. So Evan says, oh, it's 4 mil because it's 5 by 100, but these are 4 mil, 4 by 100, and uh, these are different, so 4 mil won't do. So I tried before, and that's a 4 mil spacer I got made up, and that fits there, but uh, it doesn't work. So I had to go all the way up. I thought 6 mil might do, because there is another video of someone else using a 6 mil. So what I ended up doing was getting a load of washers, and each washer is about 1.5 mil and just keep adding them till eventually they'd all fit and when I have the carrier on and the disc would fit in between it and there was an even gap I'll show you the even gap but it should be an even gap in between the two of them that it wasn't rubbing on one side or on the other side um, when I take that measurement then I knew how much to get them made up by, so that turned out to be 8 mil. So I got four 8 mil spacers all made up, so they're lovely and laid it out. And uh, they'll go on there, then they'll push out this by 8 mil, 
so I will have to get slightly longer bolts but um, it fits all perfectly obviously the bolt does have to be longer so we will have to get longer bolts but um, I'm going to bolt it up just for the video and to see how it looks brilliant so that's how it looks and it's all bolted up so as I was saying the distance between here and here you want to keep it even on both sides so a bit hard to see it exactly on camera but um you have to make sure that the gap is the same so obviously they don't make a disc 312 mil across and 4 by 100 so every disc that you get will be unique to the offset back here and according to mtech when i was chatting to them there's uh two lovely girls on uh the, the chat and I talked to both of them on different days and they were incredibly easy and, and nice to talk to. So thank you very much. Um, they explained to me that I thought they got blanks and then they just redrilled them. And that's what on the chat it was being perceived as until they kind of explained to me, no, the discs are pre-drilled and you, you can't get blanks. As, as far as MTech are concerned, you can't. Now, you can get 5 by 100 but if you get 5x100 and redrill it to 4x100, there's not enough surface area to mill them out. So how do you find the right discs? Well, it's half kind of potluck. So I want a 312mm uh, discs across, so that only cancels out most of the other discs. This diameter here has to be a certain diameter. The offset here has to be a certain uh, thickness. And the disc itself has to be a certain thickness. So eventually I found the correct disc, which was 312 mil across. It had the right bore, uh, the right thickness up here. Uh, there's enough space to redrill it to four by 100. And this distance here is the offset of the disc. So maybe I could have found a better disc with less offset. So obviously, hopefully, like maybe like a Skoda Octavia or something else might have had less offset. But um, these are the discs I end up uh, with because that's basically all they had or whatever they could find. So with that offset and the thickness of the disc itself. So obviously when it sits under the hub, it's actually going to push it out as well. Um, when I had everything figured out, that's how you can figure out the distance here. And obviously if you buy different discs for different cars and try to make them fit on um, they're all gonna have a slightly different offset anyway so although I have 8 mil here I've seen someone else using a I think it's mark 1 Audi TT and they only had to use 6 mil and I've seen other people maybe using a Skoda a VRS um, or a St. Leon or mark 5 I think Golf and I think that the offset there for, for this um, spacer here is only 4 mil or, or 5 mil. So, but that would have been for 5 by 100, not 4 by 100. Yeah, the, the, the actual number of the, the thickness of that spacer will vary on a few different factors. So it's not that one answer is more correct over another answer. It's just that it depends on the disc that you get, how it was redrilled, the thickness of the, th the actual thickness of the disc on this is face plate here and the offset here. So yeah, just by chance, the one I got, I don't remember exactly what I got. I think it was, an, it was either a, a Mark II or something like that, Audi TT or a Audi um, RS or something like that. Something, obviously something with big horsepower. But I'm, whatever I got, I needed eight mil. So that's why it's eight mil back here. So as far as brakes go, I'm absolutely delighted with that. So I have 312 mil discs, big calipers, uh, they're single pots, but um, I'm absolutely delighted with them. Why are they green? And that's a very good question. So I looked it up last night, and as far as I can work out, they're either off a of Seat Leon or a Skoda Octavia. And Volkswagen or the VAGE group, so some are green, some are red, and some are yellow. And I don't know which I have, but... They're all exactly the same. They just get different paint in the factory. That's all the difference. That's the only difference in color. So maybe eventually I will paint them uh, red, but for the moment they're gonna stay green because it's just a bit weird and a bit unique. So why did I go four by 100? Well, all the wheels I have on all the other cars 
are all 4x100. So the Mark II Golf, the Mark I Golf, the other Corrado, the other, other Corrado, um, everything is 4x100. So it makes sense to keep these also 4x100. Otherwise, I'd have to go off and get a special set of, of wheels just for this one car. And if I didn't like them or, I don't know, for whatever reason I decided to change, I'd have to go with 5x100. So if I say everything is 4x100, I can switch in between wheels. Um, it just makes life so much easier just being able to swap uh, between wheels. Obviously, big disc means I think the smallest I can go at, get away with now is a 16-inch wheel. But 16-inch are still perfect. So... Um, either 16 or 17. 17 fits perfectly onto it. I have another set of nice wheels that'll probably go into this, but they're only 16s. But they will clear everything because they have checked it. Okay, brilliant. So why did it go 4x100 and not 5x100? Obviously 5x100 would have been much easier to do. Um, I would be running wider track, but that doesn't really matter too much. I think the fenders and everything here, because these are either an early car, they are slightly narrower, but there wouldn't be enough in it anyway. I, I think it's only like a tiny amount. So um, yeah, it still would make more sense to go five by 100 than four by 100. Yes, that is correct. I would have saved myself a whole load of extra engineering and working stuff out and made the project go faster. That is true. Five by 100 here in Ireland, um, I looked on the internet and just even on the second hand market, I think I said, saw two sets on a buy and sell website where I typed in 4x100 and there was pages and pages and pages of um, just different wheels that came up. So uh, it's so much easier because even the Jap cars, some of them took 4x100 as well. So there's a huge market and a huge range of different wheels where 5x100, there was two sets available on the second hand market. So like um, that, it just makes sense. Just stay away from 5x100 and go to 4x100. So why did I get the 110mm bolt pattern and get redrilled to 4x100? Why didn't I just take this disc which came off the brakes and um, they're 5x100 and redrill this one? Well, it's down to the amount of material that you'd actually take away. So here I have a 4x100 and a 5x100. So if I flip them up to down and line up those two holes, Sorry, hard to do it with one hand. But anyway, there you go. Let's now get the bolt in, and we set, line up the two centers, so we just move it across. There. So I've already scribed a little circle for each of them where these would be. So take that away. It's like make and do. Anyway, so you can see there's a whole circle there circle just there and I know they are hard to see but there is a circle there as well so that be your four pattern which would work but if you could see there they're very tight beside each other like there's very little wall between this hole here there we go so there's very little wall between this circle here if I had drilled it and this one here now as I as mtech explained to me these bolts when you go through, they're not actually stopping the disc from rotating. It's a clamping force, so it's how tight can you drive, or you tighten the wheel onto these bolts, which will pull the, the face of the wheel onto this and through this onto the hub. So you're not actually relying on friction, you're actually relying on the bolts to actually hold everything. So that was explained, that was made sense. Although still you want decent material between the, each hole. So now we have our 5x100 uh, bolt pattern with 312mm disc brakes. So now we take our 4x100 and we line it up. So there's the hole and that in there. And again we just line everything up. The second one here so I can line it up as well. Because sometimes they come with a double bolt pattern. So now we have two here. So that's still okay, so we can line everything up and we'll just scribe that. Okay. Now, we have one hole here 
and one hole here to drill. But again, there's very little material between this side and this side of the hole if we did drill it. And the same down here. That I know it's a clamping force, but you still want some material between the two of them. So this is what MTEC were telling me, that they don't sell blanks, unfortunately. Because if they did, I wouldn't have this problem. So you have to find a disc that you, if you're going to re-drill it, that has enough material between the two holes. So this is what I ended up with. So it's 110 mil across between the two between the original holes. So what they did was they were able to redrill me four by 100. So there is material there. I know it's not much, but there is material. And this hole here, it it came into it, but um, they used the most amount of material that they could possibly get away with. So that's the hole that clamps the disc to the hub. Um, so it just ends up that you don't have it, but I said that doesn't matter. So that's one hole, that's the second hole. So again, it's a clamping force, so you're okay. And it's left and right. It doesn't really matter if it's a little bit high this side, so that's okay. And there's decent material here as well. And the same on this one, there's decent material either side of that hole. So that's why I end up going with 110 mil and not using the, the better five by 100 uh, discs. To get these discs re-drilled, I had to get uh, 5 by 110. So I say if the 5 by 110 is one ring, and the 4 by 100 is another ring, so that 10 mil of a gap between the two rings, that gives you enough meat. So if you had the 4 by 100 on a 5 by 100 stud pattern and you were re-drilling them, they'd both be in the same line or the same ring. And so you'd end up with very little meat in between the two holes, where if you have the 4x100 and the 5x110, they're on different rings or different uh, radius. That means that it should be all okay. So anyway, that's 312mm across, about 25mm deep. Whatever that there is. 25 as well, or 26. So, um, yeah, that's the discs I'm using. I don't remember what they're off exactly. Unfortunately, the email from MTech has been deleted, so I don't have it anymore. But, um, that's the discs, that's how you work out what disc you get. Um, I don't know whether it's right or wrong having that much material either side, but I couldn't get blanks to get them re-drilled, so this is what I have to do. So i um, still happy with it and uh, about to install them onto the car permanently. Hey guys, so thanks very much for watching. I know it was a bit of a long video and a lot of explaining on just how the brakes work and how do I come up with each solution. But uh, I know if I've, I've had different people ask me different questions and uh, I said I'll just make a whole video and try to cover absolutely every scenario of question that people would ask. But um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, a lot of people have subscribed, so thank you very much to everyone that has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, ring that bell, it's in one of those corners. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Support me on PayPal in the link below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.